And Clubhouse Chatter continues with your hosts, Tony Torcato and Norm Ordez. Well, that's right. Brian got it right. Announcing you first. I mean, hey, there are, we go. You, you got me on Major League Experience. So, <laughs> <laughs> so hey. our, our next guest is Dale Torcato, who is Tony's dad. And my dad, yep, best coach I've ever had. Along, you know, just like just like Tony, Tony was the number one draft pick out of Woodland High. Woodland High, and Dale was a number twelve Tw- pick out of round. Woodland. Twelfth, yeah, out of Woodland as well. Dale, how you doing? I'm good, thanks. And so Dale played two seasons with the Walla Walla Padres, and during the Portland Maverick days. And so yeah. we're going to get his take on what it was like from an outsider's point of view, and you know the opponent playing against the uh, Portland Mavericks of course battered bastards of baseball good flick huh and so <laughs> but you know first of all so you played with Walla Walla in what 73 and 74 that's correct yes I did and what was it what was it like playing in Walla 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 of course now they've got the Walla Walla Suites which mm-hmm. is a Jeff Cirillo ran organization um, in they're in the uh, West Coast League uh, along with the Corvallis Knights. But what was it like playing professional ball in wall ball? Oh, it was an enjoy- enjoyable experience. It re- really reminded me of my hometown here in Woodland, California, except that, that that's a college town, and uh, I, I do know that it gets hot up there uh, <laughs> like it does down here. Um, we had a good uh, crowd base, though, and uh, it was uh, a good experience. Who's the manager, Dad, on that uh, 73? Cliff Ditto. Cliff Cliff did. And seventy four also, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you yeah. guys, you guys won the championship in seventy three or seventy four. In seventy three, we uh, we went fifty one and twenty nine that year, I recall. You, and uh, we correct. had a, mm-hmm. we had a thirteen game win streak, which was a Northwest League record until it was broken, I think, in two thousand eleven, um, something like that. But yeah, we had a very good team. We had some good battles with Portland. They uh, yeah. beat up on us. They beat up on us first part of the season, and then uh, we got better as the season went along, and we ended up beating them for the championship. That's right. Your championship in 73, your first year, and, and it was crazy because my first year in the Northwest League, we won a championship. Right. But it's yep. cool, cool because my dad and I drafted out of Woodland High School, 18 years old. We both signed. We both go to the Northwest League our first year, and we win a championship our first year, and then That's we both of- get hurt by getting hit in the mouth. I think you broke your That's nose, right, right Dad? Yes, I did. And I and I broke a bone in my lower chin here uh, from getting hit in the mouth huh. of the ball. So it was weird. It was wow. like, yeah, it was crazy. That's kind of a weird. Uh, yeah, how how ironic that was. And I, you know, know. I was thinking about both teams had similarities though, as far as why we were successful. We had uh, uh-huh. uh, strength up the middle. We had great pitching, um, uh, starting and relieving. Um, then you had the leadership from the veterans, uh, mm-hmm. the college players, and. Uh, so I see a lot of similarities between the two teams. Yeah. You know, and I, I've asked Tony this question, and I, I imagine it probably um, didn't change over the years, but coming out of high school, being drafted and coming out and going to the Northwest League, what was that transition like for you? That was a swift league, um, mm-hmm. i got to tell you. I bet 80% of the players that make up that league are college players. Right. Yep, exactly. And so – you know, I'm 18, coming out of a small town, and then um, going to the short season Northwest League. I myself, <clears throat> I could hang physically, but mentally is where I had that problem is uh, getting accustomed to pro ball. Uh-huh. Um, so I would have been better off, uh, you know, going to an instructional league or rookie league first. But as it was back then, they didn't have those leagues available, so mm-hmm. they, they threw you right into the fire. <laughs> yeah, I remember I played against all the college. Like you yeah. said, eighty percent of the league was college. But you, Tony, you could have gone to the instructional league and played with the Arizona Giants. At I that think time. they had it then. I, I think so. But um, I think they, they they knew I could hit. You were a little more. Advanced. Yeah, they knew I could hit, so they they threw me in the Northwest League, and I ended up hitting two ninety. Right, two ninety one. That's pretty year. good. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, there was a big difference between Tony and I as far as ability. Yeah, he had a little more skills than I did. <laughs> but I didn't have the arm you did. Yeah, we had a, a little different skill set. But <laughs> my dad had the, the arm out of a big league arm out of high school. Right. So the battered bastards of baseball. Have you seen it? 
Yes, I have. Very and, good flick. And what kind of memories did it bring back for you? <laughs> <laughs> Just how goofy that team operated. I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, man, yeah. they got in the they got the umpire's ear before the game even started. Kind of like a <laughs> intimidating type thing. That's and, funny. Uh, I remember. If somebody from their team didn't throw it out in the game, it was very surprising. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I remember one game where they needed a reliever, but they forgot to get him warmed up. So all of a sudden, <laughs> they had this uh, Labrador retriever yep. at the desktop, and they left his dog out on the field to give that reliever some time to warm up. <laughs> I guess that, they did that several times, you know. That's funny. You know, it's funny. We've had we've had Frank and uh, Frank Peters and uh, Jim Swanson on a couple of times, and uh, you know, I feel as a baseball fan, I feel like I got screwed because I never got to witness the Portland Mavericks in person. Yeah. Oh and my God! It was it was a spectacle. It was, I don't know. You know, some <laughs> some say it was baseball at its best, but you know, coming you know looking at it from an organizational view, you know, they weren't. They weren't too uh, popular. Yeah, that's right. They kind of went went against the grain of baseball. But I tell you what, their players had chips on their shoulder because they had you know something to prove. They were probably castaways from other teams and so forth. So they came to play. I tell you, and uh, they had a lot of talent. Yeah, you know, they have guys try out. They they were painters. Yeah, they were you know bartenders. Yeah, yeah they, right. They, all these odd jobs, you know. And they came. Ac they ride drive their motorcycle across the country, you know, yep. just to try out for the team. Right. You know, right. What, what was the salary back then, Dad? For you guys? Oh boy, <laughs> I think I got maybe five six hundred at the most uh, per month. Yeah, and, not very and much. I think when yeah. I when I signed, I was a twelfth rounder, and I got three thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars to play. So. But to me, the money didn't really matter. It was just getting away and experience in pro ball. I don't know. No regrets on that. That's what, like, on battered bastards of baseball, those guys would drive across the oh, country. Yeah. But they said money was an object. They just wanted to play just pro to play ball. ball. You know? Yeah. And yeah. So, so playing against the Portland Mavericks. So now we've all seen what they were like on the battered bastards of baseball. Um, but what was it like? You know, you, you you say they played with a, a chip on their shoulder, and so they were guys that were cast-offs from other teams that nobody wanted, you know, yeah. for whatever yeah. reason. You know, you had Jim Swanson, who obviously could play the game, but nobody wanted him because he was a left-handed catcher, you yeah. know? that's funny. And yep. and then you had, what, Daryl Thomas? Was it Daryl? Reggie Thomas. Reggie it? Thomas. Reggie Thomas, yeah. who, who is missing – whether he's dead or alive, nobody knows where he is. But, I mean, that cat can motor. I mean, he fast, huh? you know, oh, he was fast gosh. and he would stretch a single into a double. What was it like, yeah. you know, being an opponent um, and being an organizational player, watching these guys, you know, to where you guys had rules, to where these guys didn't have rules? Uh, in a way, you kind of wish you were on their team. But, <laughs> <laughs> I know, imagine being on their team. That'd be cool. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they uh, they were entertaining. Like I say, and they they'd come at you. They'd slide in, you know, cleats up. Man, you you had to be ready for them. They were running on the borderline of being dirty. <laughs> I got a question. You played against Kurt Russell in '73. He yeah, he played sec he played second base for that club for the Mavericks. Yeah, yeah. he was he's a pretty, pretty good, good player. athlete. Yeah. He, he yeah. could handle his own out there. Yes, he could. Yep. But you always knew when you made that road trip to Portland, man. You were the fans; they were on you and from from inning one, and you know you were you were gonna have a battle on your hands. So it's uh, it was a fun trip always. So now, as a as a player, so when you came to Portland, so you you've told the story of where they've they let the lab out on the field to allow their pitchers right. more time, and then and then <laughs> seeing their players go up into the stands with the fans and sit there and drink beer, and then you've got yeah. then you've got Joe Garza up yeah. on the dugout breaking out with right. the broom with the fire broom. Big, what was that guy like guy. watching all that? I mean, you it know, was hilarious. You guys enjoyed that. Oh, yes, very much so. We got a kick out of it. Um, I remember the starting pitcher. I'm not, I can't recall his name, but he was going to start that game. And probably 45 minutes before the game, he's up in, in the bleachers BSing with some friends with his shirt off and everything. And I don't know if he was drinking a beer or not, but 
we were going, <laughs> that's a starting pitcher? <laughs> yeah, he was scared with no shirt on. Huh? He, came, he actually threw a pretty good game against us, but yeah, yeah, that's yep. the kind of stuff that happened. That's then. classic. And so <laughs> the organiza- organizational end of it, you know, um, the Padres and, and whoever else was in the league, they really – despised them because one they were an independent league team yeah. and they were good and so you know you you watch the show and you know the northwest league had it out for the portland mavericks and mm-hmm. so you played the now you guys played the portland mavericks in the 73 championship series yeah and you guys beat them yes and so, you know, as as the story is told from the Portland Mavericks side of it is is that, you know, you guys brought a couple of players, dropped a couple of players down to make sure that you guys beat them. Mm-hmm. Is that, is that I, correct? That's not, no, that's not how I saw it. Okay. We, we, we had nobody, to, we had no farm club below us to drop any players. I know that we didn't take any players from the next level mm-hmm. for that series, so it's pretty was pretty much a team we started with. I think from that, that was the sec- that was the next that, that was, was the next year. Yeah, I that think. was the next year with the Mariners, I believe. Or the, that I think that organization did. Yeah, not, I don't think the Padres did in '73. Yeah, but um, from from what I saw on Batter Bastard of Baseball, right? Um, but uh, you know, the Northwest League, man. You know, that's a it's a competitive league and. You know they'll do anything to win, and the batter bastards of baseball, man. That that's one of my favorite documentaries. It's pretty awesome. I watched it, it a couple really times. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, you, I've got a question, Dad. There, your scout that signed you out of Woodland High. What was his name? His name was Rick Slinker. Didn't he come out when, in '98, my senior year, if I recall yes, that correctly? He was, yes, he was still a scout. He was looking at you. That's and, right. Uh, I think he was with a different organization though than the Padres, but because I swore yeah, he's still yeah you talked still him. out there scouting. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, because I remember <laughs> I think you talked to him, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Yes, I, I did. He remembered me correctly. Yeah, we have to, we'll, right. have to, we'll have to hunt him down. Yeah, I wonder if he's small still, world and get his get some stories. I I love those old time scouts. You yeah. know. Yeah. And so we had um, George Genovese on here before uh, he passed away and of course mm-hmm. George was with the Dodgers and the Giants and scouted forever and um, you know just hearing stories of back in the 40s and 50s and <laughs> you know how there was there was no money ball you yeah. know scouted right. there was no saber matri- metrics they went uh, they went by by feel by feel by uh-huh. eye and and now the game's changed so much changed. And they're, all they're using all numbers. this saber metrics and all this this oh, yeah. technical stuff which I, I think it worked, but I go you'd rather go yeah, on field. I'd rather go by eye. And what you're you know? seeing, you know, what the pitcher's throwing, yep. in, but not by paper. I, I just right. don't like it. And so so playing up in Walla Walla, so you guys won a championship in 73, and then how'd you guys do in 74? In 74, we had a really good team, too, but we just didn't have the pitching we had the year before. Um, kind of a funny story. In 74, there was a, a guy named Rocky Perone. Yeah, you could Google him up. Well, he was there. Uh, he made our starting uh, roster uh, on the advice of a scout down south who had who had seen him. Actually, this guy turned out to be 36 years old. Wow! Wore a wig to uh, make him look younger. <laughs> <laughs> what? And, and yes, he did. And he got into one game and uh, got a base hit and a walk or something like that. The uh, opposing manager had, had known this guy, Rocky. Um, from a previous tryout or something, and he, he told our manager about it. The next day, the manager called Rocky in to the office, <laughs> and um, he, he, he released him at that point. So, <laughs> we're a wig. Uh, that's funny. Rocky and I, we roomed at the same hotel in Walla Walla, and he got released. He After he got released, he came back and told me he was there to write a book on um, <laughs> Interesting. the life and times of a minor league baseball player. So, <laughs> but Google this guy up, man. He's you know, it's it's entertaining. That's uh, funny. Little piece on them. You know, things like that happen more times than you think. I remember back in 2001, um, a guy named Snyder Santos played with the Yakima Bears, uh-huh. and uh-huh. and Snyder, you looked at him and you you knew something was different, <laughs> but you couldn't put your finger on it. And so right. after after September 11th, the following year, 2002, well. It all of a sudden became that Snyder wasn't a 19-year-old. He was like 
a 27, 28 year old, um, wow. somebody totally different, but he was Dominican. And so mm -hmm. their, you know, their papers, you know, they were able to get, you know, papers of his past cousin who had passed away and he was actually 19 and, but it, it was wow. crazy. And you never saw him, <laughs> you never saw him again. Yeah. You know, yeah. never heard from him, never saw him again. And just, I mean, and he was an okay player, but yep. it's one of those deals. Yeah, well, I think it was easier to get by with that back in the day. Back in the day, right. yeah, uh, it's different now. <laughs> yeah, man. What was the what was the best advice ever given to you um, during your baseball career, and by who? The best advice, probably from Cliff Ditto, our manager, um, when I first arrived there and was working out. He he told me he says. Uh, you're going to have to uh, grow up real quick here. We, we were like your 18, and, uh, and these guys are a little older than you, and you're going to fail. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, failure is part of the game, and you just got to let it go and just keep working hard. And uh, I I realized that, and I worked as hard as I could. And things didn't work out for me, but I still gave it the best shot I had, and uh, no regrets. But, hey, uh, you know what? He's you got, a smart guy. You got drafted out of high school and signed as an 18-year-old. A lot of people don't get the, that yeah. opportunity. So, yeah, you know, just like me, I mean, it was it was, it was hard to get drafted, right. but just sign and go play hard. All right, Tony, like so this did. is a question for you now. So what was the best piece of advice for your baseball career that your dad gave you? Oh, geez, growing up? Yeah, I mean, uh, well, there's a lot of conversations, but <laughs> – um, you know, just uh, take care of yourself and, you know, make sure you warm up correctly. That's big now. It is. And um, warm up correctly and don't injure yourself. You know, that that's a, and uh, just work hard and, you know, go out and hit and practice. But the b main thing is, you know, don't o overdo it and get injured. Right. Because that's a big thing. These parents are ruining these kids' arms doing all these travel ball leagues and stuff. And, you know, I didn't do a whole, we didn't do a whole lot of that. You know, my dad didn't, you know, let me throw out my arm, you know, like most people do now. But, um, you know, he took care of me and he was probably the best coach I had. You know, I'm not going to take any way, you know, anything away from Ren Rob Rinaldi, who was the Woodland High coach. Right. But, you know, my dad just knew. You know, he he played pro. He just He'd knew. Been there. The, he, He'd yeah, been there he knew the little things that the other guys didn't. You know, so um, I think that's what helped me. But the conversation was, you know, just make sure you warm up and just take care of your your body. When when uh, Tony made his major league debut, number one, were you there for that debut? And as his father, what was going through your mind? Yeah, I was there. Um, what was going through my mind? I uh, it was just kind of uh, a surreal feeling mm -hmm. being at the park and having my son be in a Giants uh, uniform down in the dugout with uh, Jeff Kent, Barry Bonds, and, and the rest of that crew. I know. That's awesome. um, like a dream come true for me. Yeah. Um, I, I got a, My dad came outside the clubhouse a couple of times and stuff yeah. backstage yeah it was pretty cool you know it's, it's like once in a right. lifetime once in a lifetime opportunity you know you want your family there now how you far know. where you grew up how far from San Francisco the Bay Area is that um, about an hour and 15 minutes and so so Giants fans yeah so you guys were Giants so what was it like I mean for you guys I mean not only for Tony to make his major league debut but to make it for what called the hometown team yeah, for the team he grew up rooting for and, mm -hmm. and we rooted for. And, and uh, that's what made it so special. Um, we wanted that all along. And the giant scout, Doug McMillan, who uh, who followed Tony since he was a sophomore, mm -hmm. uh, was a big influence on, on him signing with the Giants organization. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. He was a scout, and he coached the Aridco games. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. like I told you, with me right, and CC, right. Sabathia, we're on the same team for that, that uh, tournament. And that th that's where you need to go as a high school player. Absolutely. Is the Aridco games. Yeah. These travel thing does not even matter. If you right. get to the Aridco games, you are getting a scholarship. And there's, and there's some different ones. You know, you've got there the, is uh, a the perfect games. Ones. It was kind of along that same line. The Aridco, the Aridco games, games absolutely. is the wood bat tournament. Right. And um, all the college scouts are there, pro scouts. I only had 14 at-bats. But 
right after that tournament, I got like 10 scholarship offers. That's where you go. So what was that transition like for you as, as a high schooler, Tony, you know, going from a metal aluminum bat to a wood bat? That's what was where that my dad like? was the best coach. That's where we, we, we hit with wood bats. He'd throw me BP with wood bats, and so I was okay. already used to it. Okay, and so, which yeah, is a big step big. because not everybody's getting that. No, so when I went and, you know, played in that wood bat tournament, I, I went like, you know, seven for 14 or something and wood bat it hit a couple off the wall so i was already used to the wood bat right you know that's that's, that's a big thing if you want to get drafted you know start hitting the wood you know, using the wood bat in high school it just just off and on use it so you're used to it right what was what was the highlight of your baseball career dale was it was it being drafted by the padres or was it that championship in 73 i think it was that championship in 73 yeah. Um, you know, that I'm pretty proud of, um, just, uh, being around a, a great group of, of guys that summer, you know, uh, uh, created some lasting memories for me. It was a, it was a good time. Do you stay in contact with any, with any of those guys? Uh, no, but I ran into a couple A small world. I was playing a Slopia softball tournament in Florida. I happened to run into, uh, well, that's right. our first baseman in 74, and then uh, ran into uh, another player who was the dad of a player that Tony was playing with at San Jose, his last name uh, Alfano. Yeah. So, and I hadn't Jeff. seen those guys, you know, in 20 years. So. Wow. Jeff Alfano, Don Tony. Alfano. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. He was drafted. Right. Wasn't he a first rounder? Yeah. Don. Something like that. I think first or second. Yeah, he was yeah. a high round pick. Very good player. And then I played with Jeff. He was a catcher. Good player. You know, right. he's just. Yep. But he, you know, it's hard to make it. But he was good. Do you do you uh, do you still follow the the game pretty close today, Dale? I do. Yes. And what um, do you have any uh, favorite players that are playing today? The guys that you really enjoy watching? I I really enjoy watching this Jose Altuve. <sighs> oh um, yeah, he's good. Yeah. He's a player. I he, really enjoy it. He is. He's a throwback. I know. Yes, he is. You know, five yeah. foot five. Yeah, little guy. I mean, the guy's got six home runs He's got already. Pop though. He got pop. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Altuve. Altuve is awesome. And uh, Altuve played in Lancaster, by the way. Oh, it was dude. after after I had left Lancaster and they became a Astros organization. Um, but but yeah, no. Altuve is on. You know, Altuve's on my list. You know, along yeah. with Harper, you know, and Price and yeah. um, you know Trout Mike. and right. uh, you know Machado over there in Baltimore. I mean, baseball Absolutely. baseball's in a good place right now with all this young talent. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Um, uh, baseball will always be my my number one game. It's a game I follow the most. So what it, what is uh, it about baseball for you that makes it that? Um. Well, a challenge. It's, it's yeah. a challenge, you know. It's uh, the competition between the batter and the hitter. Uh, it's just a great game because anything can happen at any given given time. You know what's going to happen on on a given pitch, and the strategies, you know, mm -hmm. um, that are there. Um, they can take the replay away if they want. I yeah. think it <laughs> yeah, slows uh, the game down a little bit. But yeah. um, other than that, it's still a game that I remember growing up as. You know, baseball, baseball is baseball. Baseball is yeah. what it used to be when you were playing. It's still the same game. A little bit different on how, you know, some of the rules and stuff like that they have now. But it's still the same game. You still got to hit the ball with that wood bat. Mm -hmm. You got to still be yeah. able to, to catch that ball and to make a play, yeah. you know. Yeah. And uh, it's tougher now to make it. There's a lot of talent. Everybody's there's good. There's a lot of talent. Everybody is good. Yeah, yeah so, absolutely. Especially in the minor leagues, man. You know, you got to stand out these days. All right, Dale. So we're gonna we're gonna go to music. Do you listen to a lot of music? Yeah, I listen to a little bit of everything, actually. Okay, so we're gonna go seventies music, and so <laughs> we're gonna go we're gonna go seventies music. Brian, you ready, Brian? Oh God! And so I got to so some what? Too, huh? uh, so let's go seventies music and and name off a couple of your favorite songs from the seventies. Oh man. We'll start with we'll start with you, Dale. Um, I think I like uh, Purple Haze, Jimi Hendrix. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Good one. All right, Brian, what do you got? Anything by Wings. 
Oh, Paul McCartney and uh -huh. Wings. Okay. All right, Tony. You know what I was going to say? Jimmy, too, uh, uh, along the Watchtower. Along the Watchtower? Um, yeah. Um, oh, you got me thinking those 70s, though. I mean, I still listen to the 70s and, like, on iHeart, right. all that stuff. Right. But, man, that's a tough one. Man, you know, I'm going to have to go, I'm, you know, and this is no shock to Brian, but Muskrat Love, Captain and Tennille. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That, that was, you know, 70s was a great era of music. As was oh, the man. 80s, Absolutely. as was the yeah. 80s. Um, but, you know, you had your Paul McCartney and Wings, you know, you had, you know, Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, you had The Doors, I mean, Kansas. Oh, The Doors. You yeah. know. Um, Kenny Rogers. Kenny, Kenny, Kenny Rogers. Rogers, yeah. And so, once again, Mr. Dale Torcado. Dale, hey, this was fun. Thanks for coming on, and uh, let's do this again sometime. Okay, well, thanks for having me. I appreciate that. You guys have a good day. All right, All thanks, right. Dad. Talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. All right, Dale Torcado, Tony's dad. Man, you know, ah, what was that? That would have been so awesome to be just a whole part of that Portland Mavericks era. I know, You man, know, whether, cool. you know, you're a fan or you're playing against them, mm -hmm. they were wacky. The, uh, I wish I, I played in the 70s. I, I think they no were. Rules. I think they were good for Portland baseball. Oh, and yeah. I still think I still think today, and I'm I, I don't think Frank Peters agrees with me, but I think they kind of damaged Portland baseball in a way because of the fun that everybody was having. And so, because you look at all the franchises that have been through Portland since, and they failed. The Portland Beavers, the Portland Rockies. Yeah, the Beaver. I remember playing against them, and you know, they wouldn't get no fans. I know. And it was a great place but to play. Why is that? I don't you know, know. Yeah. Brian. Well, you know the Phillies, uh, being the parent organization of the Beavers, would draw less than 500 people at a game. Yeah. Uh, they would announce 500, which so, meant like 300. So mm -hmm. you had the Pirates, the Phillies, the Twins, the Padres, who all rolled through Portland. Um, you know, and you know they would be successful at first. You know, a little bit, but man, I remember going to Beaver games, and you know now it's crowded to be 3,500 when there's like. 200 you know i mean it was it was crazy and i don't know why they could not draw on portland i think portland is a baseball town the closest person to get anybody there jack kane portland rocky single a hmm. jack for kane. a couple years yes yeah portland rockies you know the portland rockies were fun but they played in that huge huge stadium it was too big for them. Now they have that uh, game they play there, soccer or something like that. S soccer. Oh. Hey, yeah, <laughs> man. I'm not a soccer fan, but I I'm will defend really. the Portland Timbers. And you know, by gosh, I was upset when baseball left. I was too. That was a great but turf field, huh? It was Portland awesome. it Timbers. Was. What they have done for yeah. professional sports in the city of Portland, <laughs> they outdraw the the Portland Trailblazers. Yeah, what the heck? You know, I mean, they packed that stadium, you know, and, and, and talk. Outdraw. Oh. I haven't gone to Not one Not for game. a season, though. Well, no, because they have right. less games. Right. But they have more fans. I mean, you know, they'll sell out every game. Trailblazers sell out every game? Not anymore. They do still. They they, they announced well, they sell out. Beat the Clippers the other night. Or no last night. Or the uh yeah, yeah, last night. And they got sold out, right? The playoff game? Oh yeah. Oh no, yeah, big I, time. I think uh, you know There are tickets available though for Monday night's game. Yeah. To, you know, Portland, they're point. still in it. Portland's in it. Down two one, but I, hey, you know what? They got a shot. I hope they I think the Timbers for Portland is good. There are more I, Blazer fans though, I think. Well definitely. I mean there's no argument about that. Yeah. There's no argument. I mean, Portland. I mean, the trail. Portland is a trailblazer town. Correct. There's Always no if and yeah. if ands buts about it. They're big on the timber. You know. Man. They are. But I'll tell you what, I'm not Portland Timbers. I mean, I don't. I don't you know, like soccer. I'm not a big soccer fan either. But do what they're doing for professional sports and. Yeah. Well, they, they have to have a sport for those who can't play baseball. Exactly. That is true. Okay. That is yeah. true. <laughs> yeah. And so, all right. Hey, once again, Brian Erickson. Tony Torcado. Are you lazy asses up here? I am, Norm. We are Clubhouse Chatter. We're going to have Ken Wilson of the Portland Pickles 
coming up at the 11 o'clock hour and we are sponsored by baseballisms.com if you like my hat childhood cancer hat baseballisms.com we are also sponsored by baseball dudes uh chris gazelle up there in vancouver washington to be the best you must train like the best baseball dudes Based by pros, build an athlete sports and education, Mitch Canham, skipper Mitch Canham of the Clinton Lumber Kings. His dad, Mark Canham, MDM Designs, does our shirts and hoodies. If you are interested in one, you know, hey, let me know and I can hook you up. And we stream live on yamhilltoday.com every Sunday. And if you're looking for to sponsor us, hey, check us out, normboy18 at gmail.com. Send me a message and I'll get back to you. We're on Twitter, Clubhouse Chatter 1T, Facebook, YouTube, iTunes, Major League Baseball.com blogs. That's Brian. I'm Norm. Tony Torcado. We Thank are you. Clubhouse Chatter. We'll be back at 11 o'clock with Ken Wilson of the Portland Pickles.